welcome to another Slow Saturday. This broadcast is from a small little town in the Northern Cape of South Africa called Ograbis. And we are only here for one night. We've traveled um, just over a thousand k's today, which would amount to how many miles? Let me see. I didn't even think about that. Uh, it's about 625 miles. Yeah. We also had a flat tire on the way here. We struck a bottle, so we had to have a tire repaired. It was a temporary repair, but it will get us to Cape Town, which is fine. So we'll have it fixed on Monday. So tomorrow morning we're going to leave here again um, and then we're going to go on a slow road trip down the west coast of South Africa and go into all the small quaint little towns and see what we can see and whatever. And if you want I can take you on a road trip with me with some photos that I will post in my Facebook group. Um, Excuse my husband, he's got a very booming voice and he's in the room and although the door is closed, you will hear him anyway, he's just got a phone call. Okay, so what am I working on? Well, in the car, I don't like designing in the car because the way I design, I knit a row and I type a row and I check the row and I knit a row and I type a row and I check the row, crochet is exactly the same. So for me to design in the car is just about impossible. It's just too cumbersome having the laptop on my lap and everything. So when I'm in the car, I choose to take some something mindless and for me that's knitting because I can knit without having to look at my hands but I can't do that with crochet. So, um, Remember last week I said that I want to do, I've got a concept in my head of a cowl that can be transformed into a beanie. Now when I have something like that in my mind as a concept, I either make a miniature piece of it and try it, but for this concept a miniature piece won't work, so then I do a vanilla piece. Um, it's usually I use variegated yarn with no intricate stitch pattern and that is ideal mindless knitting in the car. So... Um, this is the yarn that I'm working with at the moment. Let me bring it closer for you to see. It's a nice um, bluish, light purplish color. It's not my color at all. It's for my daughter. And this is how far I've gotten today in the car. So I will carry on while we're driving down to Cape Town. I will carry on with this to see what it's going to look like by the time we're there. And then I can test my concept out. And if it works, then I will redo it again. And then I'm going to use this lovely turquoise yarn from the same company. This is made, or rather it's dyed by an indie dyer in South Africa called Naughty Habit. I love her yarn. And I really, really love this one. It's a light fingering that gives you 400 meters on a 100 gram hank. And it's pure merino, so it's an absolute delight to work with. And it's nice because I like a merino with a medium twist. I don't like a low twist because it tends to split and it tends to pull. And I don't like a very high twist because then the, the um, item is hard. But this is a perfect in the middle. Um, I absolutely love this yarn. So if you're in South Africa and you're looking for some nice merino, visit the Naughty Habit website. Um, it's a four ply, she calls it light, light fingering four ply, yeah, pure merino. And she's got delightful colors as well. So I'm quite excited about this one. So this is my knitted project. Then I brought along the two balls, or rather the two packs that I showed you um, previously. Both of these are cotton yarns from Colorspun. Colorspun is also a South African indie dye. She's very well known in South Africa. Her color chart is immaculate. She's got so many colors and she matches them every time. Um, Colorspun is actually the only yarn that I've used in the past to knit something like a jumper or a pullover. And I didn't have to fade the different balls in. I could ch change from one ball to another straight and you wouldn't see a line, which to me, that's mind-blowing. So I love Dana's yarn. Dana is from Colorspun. Okay, so this one is for a knitted project and um, I'm no longer going to refer to it as design your own. We were looking for a nice name that would roll off the tongue easily and that I could use for both the knitting and the crochet projects. So um, one of my testers came up with measure and make and I think that's brilliant. So measure and make as I've explained before but in case you're new to this, 
you haven't been in my group for a long time or whatever, measure and make means that I will get you started by something like the circumference of your head. You measure the circumference of your head and you chain a chain to that length or you cast on stitches to that length if you spread it out over the needles. And from there, we, uh, I give you a method. It's not a pattern. It's a pattern in a sense that I will say to you, knit to the marker or crochet to the marker and then do this and this and this and go on to the next marker and then do that and that and that. And continue until something. It's usually it will be continue until you can just pinch it under your arm like this. If you put the garment on, if it's a top-down garment, and you can pinch the back and the front here under your arm, then you will split between the body and the and the sleeves. And that is the concept that I base my measure and make on. It's a concept that I've tested in my second crochet book that I published, and it was very well accepted by the South African crafters because it's fully size inclusive. And it's not only size inclusive, it allows for crafters that have odd body shapes to adapt the pattern to their body, like me. I'm not a big girl, but I've got big boobs. So if I use another pattern, it's not always to my liking. So with this method, you can um, fully adapt it. So this one is going to be a knitted measure and make. And this one is going to be a crochet measure and make. And both of these will be short sleeve summer tops for, um, that's why I'm working in cotton, it's for summer. Now I know South Africa, we're heading into winter, although where I am now, it's freaking hot. This is one of the hottest um, parts of South Africa. It's damn hot. Um, but we're heading into winter, but I know the rest of the world, everybody in the northern hemisphere is heading into summer. So it's perfect timing for you. So these are the first two projects in my pipeline. Now, I did a poll on my group last week, and in the first podcast, I said to you, I really don't want to do more blankets. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I asked the people um, what they would like most in um, a cowl, knitted cowl or a crochet cowl, and um, I'm just trying to get to... Okay, what items do you prefer in a cull? A whole 409 participants, participants want to make a blanket. And 180 want to make garments. So guess what? I'll be making a blanket. I will. And then Shul's got 141 votes. I'm glad the decor items didn't get much votes and I'm even more exhilarated that the toys got very little votes because there I'm drawing the line. I'm not into amigurumi. I don't like it. It's hot on the hands. It's not my thing. So I'm going to stick to measure and make items so that you can have fun making garments for yourself that will actually fit well and that you will be proud wearing and blankets. So. We're heading down to Cape Town now, which means that I am in the Moya Valley next week. And a couple, of, a couple of years ago, I knitted a blanket, the Erin Caress blanket. Um, I knitted it with a double strand of Moya Caress. And Moya Caress is a, a textured cotton. It's a cotton with a slop cotton plied with it, so it's a nice, bumpy, textured yarn. It's, it's so, so nice. I absolutely adore that blanket. It's still in my um, house. It's in my spare bedroom because my bed is too big. So this time, I want to design a blanket in such a way that you can decide how big you're going to make it. If you want to make a baby size, cool. If you want to make a single bed, cool. If you want to make a double bed, great. I'm going to make a king size. So I'll, I will write the pattern in such a way and um, give you indications of the swatching and the calculations in such a way that you will be able to make the blanket um, whichever size you want and you will be able to use whatever yarn you want. Because I understand that the people that are not in South Africa can. It's... Uh, it's difficult to get hold of the yarn and I know the international shipping is absolutely, it's just madness. Um, many crafters that can afford to buy a kit con cannot afford to buy, to, to pay the international shipping and um, I understand that fully. So I'm going to pick out yarn next week and as soon as I get it, 
I will slowly start working on the blanket, but the blanket is going to take me a couple of months. So, also the blanket is, is a big project normally that I can't cart around with me. So I'm always working on more than one thing at the same time. I've got a big project that I work with at home when I have time, and then I have something small that I can take in the car and go to friends with, and, and sometimes I have something difficult that sits on the shelf, and I only work on that when I'm alone. Um, you understand how it goes. So in the project pipeline now are these two um, measure and make summer tops with cotton. And I've already ordered yarn for two measure and make um, pullovers, um, jerseys as we call them in South Africa. Um, the one is going to be knitted and one is going to be crocheted. I would like to cater for both groups. But the blanket is going to be a crocheted blanket. I'm not easily going to knit a blanket again. It's going to take a while before I'm in the mood for that again. But I do have good news with another pattern that will be published um, probably within the next few days. This is a jersey that I crocheted for myself. And it's also a measure and make pattern. Sorry. Hmm. Ooh, that's delightful. This is a measure and make pattern. So you start off with the circumference of your head and then you crochet this. Now I want to bring it up close to you so that you can so that you can see the texture in this. The texture of the stitch is absolutely amazing. And this this jumper is my favorite one of um, all the jumpers in my cupboard at the moment. I really, really like this one. It is it's nice and it's because of the texture it's it's got a very nice hand it's very cozy it's very fluffy and it, it's just it's such a comfort garment for me i absolutely love wearing it um so this pattern is going to be on ravelry within the next few days and i will post in the facebook group once it's up if you haven't yet joined my Facebook group, go find it on Facebook, Ilona Slow Life Creations. And um, yeah, I love this one. I really, really do. Okay, so <laughs> I have to take another sip. Um, on Thursday night, one of my friends sent me a WhatsApp and she said to me, have you packed it? And I said, no, not really. I've packed the gin. And I've packed the other drinks. This is a, I don't know what's the nice English word for it. I will tell you what we call it in Afrikaans and I will explain it to you. <laughs> but don't hold it against me, okay? <laughs> we jokingly refer to this in Afrikaans as a slit suppy. Okay, a slit is a slut. And a suppy is a juicy. So it's a slutty juicy. <laughs> So this is an orange and mango vodka cooling, cooler, what do they call it, a cooler, something like that. So the only things I had packed on Thursday night was the gin and the sled suppies and my yarn. <laughs> the rest I had to wait for Friday. <laughs> okay, so this is my, um, this is my my bag that goes on road trips with me that I put all my stuff in and it says life is a beautiful ride and you know what I just realized after the past two years that I've had I yes I had a massive health scare in 2020 I nearly didn't make it and I had a, a bit of a burnout after that but the burnout was due to the, the crochet book the two books actually I worked myself to a standstill to get those books out the deadlines were terrible um, it wasn't always a smooth ride behind the scenes there were lots of of hassles and I really felt burnt out when I published the second book and unfortunately the income from that book is so pathetic actually from both that it isn't worth it it really really isn't worth it Today, my best friend sent me, um, she's also one of my testers, she sent me a message and she said, what can I do to help you so that you never stop designing again? 
And I sat in the car for a while and I thought about it and I spoke to my husband about it and we both agreed and I, I sent her a message back and I said, if I ever tell you that I want to publish another book, you can smack me. You can smack me real hard because I'm not going that route again. It's not worth it. I know there are people who love buying paper copy books, but for, in my opinion, as far as designing is concerned, the day and age of a printed pattern book is over and gone. I know there are the older generations that are not that um, in love with the internet that will still like to buy a book. I'm sorry, I can't cater for them anymore. Um, my patents will go online, I will sell them online, I'm not going to put myself into that type of pressure ever again, it just wasn't worth it. Um, to give you an example, I launched Vacheche Baby Blanket last week, the call is going to start on the 11th of April. In one week, I have earned with that pattern more than what I've earned with book two in a whole year. It isn't worth it. It doesn't make economic sense. Not at all. So after all of this, you know, life is the journey we make of it. I realize that. And if it means that you have to slow down, then do that. But you need to appreciate the journey that you're on. Life is a journey and the journey only ends when we die. And we can decide whether it will be a beautiful journey or whether it will be um, an absolute rat race of a journey that freaks us out, that harms us mentally, that steals our joy, that steals our time with loved ones. We are the sole decision makers of that. And I've decided that my life will be a beautiful journey and I will enjoy the ride. And I will enjoy the ride with people like you, like-minded people, crafters who take time out to take me time to say, I need my crafting, I need to sit and craft for a while, I don't want to be in the rat race today, who will make time for herself because we need that. If we don't, we burn out. I've been there and I'm not going there again. So my message for you this week is make time for yourself. Decide what is your ride going to look like. I've decided that what is printed on this thing, it says life is a beautiful ride. That is what I want. My life is going to be a beautiful ride and I'm going to enjoy the journey every step of the way. And my husband actually decided the same, which is why we decided to take this two-week break. The previous time we were away from work, well more or less, was in the beginning of 2019 when we visited our daughter in New Zealand. It's been three years, more than three years. And we've worked flat out for three years, right through COVID. We worked our asses off. And it's, you know what? We just decided that for our life's journey to be a beautiful ride, we need to slow down. So we've taken this two weeks and we're going to go down to Cape Town and I'm going to pick out some beautiful yarn from Moya and our baby boy, our, our first grandson is going to be born next week. We've got four granddaughters already, so I'm so, so excited about that. Um, I forgot to bring the little pants with me. Uh, it's inside now. It's actually still in the car. Um, there's, there, there are very few patterns that I will make from another designer. I don't like it. My head doesn't work like that. It's because since I was a little girl, my mother taught me to knit and crochet by doing my own designs. My mother never taught me to read a pattern. And for me, it's, it's very hard following somebody else's instructions. I really, really battle with it. But, um, just over a year ago when our daughter in Sweden, she's now in Sweden, she was in South Africa then, she was expecting a baby girl. And she asked me for, um, clothing for her to knit it. She wanted something special and um, baby jumpers, baby grows, whatever you want to call them, they're all over the place. We didn't want to make that. So I wanted to make a little cardigan, which I did, and I was looking for pants. And I didn't feel like designing at that time. I was still not 
all together there. I, hasn't, I haven't recovered yet at that stage. So I found a pattern on Ravelry called Hosenmatz. Now I, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Hosenmatz. It is the most brilliant pattern ever. I made two for my daughter. And even now, Abigail is nearly a year old. In three weeks, she will be a year old. Even now, Jessica still wears, uh, still um, uses the hose and mud pants for Abigail. And she said to me, of all the clothes that she got and everything that she's bought and everything that she's made herself, those are the absolute favorite. So I knitted one up for the grandson now because what happened is with Wacheche, I ran out of um, one color yarn. And I ordered yarn from Color Spun, but I forgot to specify it has to be double knit. So I always work with socks, so she sent me socks. So I had to wait a day or two for the double knit to come in. In the meantime, I used that sock yarn and I made him a quick pair of pads. And um, it's, it's really a pattern you can go look at. If you want to knit something useful for a baby, go for the hose and mats. They are so cute and there's enough nappy space. It's got good, um, there's a good variety of sizes in there and the bigger sizes even have a little drawstring in the waistband so that when they start crawling, they don't crawl out of their pants. Absolute brilliant pattern and it's free, it's free on Ravelry. So go and have a look at that. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to continue our little road trip down the west coast of South Africa. I'm going to take some photos and share it in the Ilona Facebook group purely for intersect for the international people that are in there that are not in South Africa and you know what I realized something today I I've been out of my country I, I visited Japan in 27 uh, 2007 yeah 27 I've visited Ireland in 2017 um, I've been to New Zealand in 2019 but there are so many places in South Africa that I haven't seen. I've never been in this part of South Africa. Which is why we chose to take the long way down to Cape Town. Purely for me to see what the west coast of South Africa looks like. And I know there must be many other people in South Africa that have never been down this route. And maybe they are in the group. So for them and for the international followers, I'm going to put some photographs. I won't... I won't um, take over the whole page with photos. I'll try to, to limit myself. I've, I've been very good today. I've actually only taken two photographs <laughs> today. The one was of the cosmos flowers. Um, in South Africa, when we see the cosmos bloom on the sides of the road, they grow wild. Then we know summer is over. Um, it's now autumn. Although here where I am now, it certainly doesn't feel like it. I also took a photo of the sunflower fields. Um, sunflower is my absolute favorite flower and it's also the national flower of the Ukraine. So I couldn't help myself. I just had to tell my husband to please stop. I want to take a photograph of the sunflowers. But those were still up in the um, area where I live. They were not too far from home. But here where I'm now, it's vastly different. And tomorrow as we go down the coast, I'm going to take some nice photos for you. And I will share it with you just to take you on a little road trip with me. Why not? We might as well have some fun. Great. Okay, Vacheche. Uh, let's quickly talk about that. The Facebook group for Vacheche Cal is up and running. In order to take part in the Cal, you have to purchase the pattern on Ravelry. It's only $5. Um, there are many people that have joined the Facebook group that I know have not yet purchased the pattern. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle it. I'm still thinking about it. But um, there won't be any pattern releases in the Facebook group. None whatsoever. Nothing. Everything will be via Ravelry updates. So once you've purchased the pattern on Ravelry, you will receive a weekly update with the new Cal section for that week. Um, I want to say a big, big thank you to everyone who has purchased the pattern in this last week. You have really, really blessed me so much. Um, you've actually made my little break a whole lot easier. So, um, I think that's the way to go. That has just confirmed it for me, is to have a paid pattern and rather make the pattern in such a way that people can use whatever yarn they want in whatever hook size they want and rather help them to swatch or whatever. 
I think that's a whole lot easier than um, giving a free pattern and try to generate a commission from kit sales because as I've seen from the previous call, kit sales are not the way to go anymore. Yeah. Okay, so that's all the news from me. I'm now going to park myself under an air conditioner with my set up here. And I'm going to have some nice purchased food from Woolworths because we're only here for one night. We didn't want to buy a whole lot of groceries to cook for ourselves. So I'm going to have some nice salads that I bought from Woolworths. And tomorrow morning we're going to go down to the Okrabi's waterfall. And I'm definitely going to take pictures for you. Great. If you haven't yet joined the group, join the group so that I can chat with you throughout the week. Otherwise, I will see you next Saturday in the next Slow Saturday. Have a blessed weekend. See you again.